Hello Sunday School children, this is Mrs. Julie and I've been missing seeing you at Sunday School every week and I've been missing the opportunity to go through that all those symbols for Jesus' journey to the cross that we always do during Lenten time. So I thought since I wasn't able to do that with you at Sunday School, now that we're doing church on video, maybe I would bring those same symbols and those lessons to you by video this morning. So as you can see, we're looking at Jesus riding a donkey. Do you happen to know why he was riding a donkey and when? Well, let's take a look at one of our first symbols. What do we see here? Hopefully, these already have some meaning for you, and maybe you learned that last Sunday at church. Let me read to you a few words from our Bible about these branches that you see here. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the King of Israel! So Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. And our symbol for that Sunday, Palm Sunday, are these palm branches that people were waving in the crowds, kind of like a parade. Let's talk about this next symbol. I think this might look familiar to some of you because we already had talked about this symbol. Let's hear what the Bible has to say about this one. Then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? So they counted out for him 30 silver coins. From then on, G Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. Hmm. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Friend, do what you came for. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. So I believe we had talked about these 30 silver coins representing the amount that Judas was paid to betray Jesus. Jesus knew he was going to do that. And then the other thing we talked about was how they knew which man to arrest because Judas gave him a kiss. Next symbols to take a look at. Think about what you see here as I read some more from John 19. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him, and the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. So we had talked about this robe that they put on Jesus. Notice this purple and shiny. I don't think the one he was wearing was so shiny, but it was purple. And we talked about how that was kind of ridiculing Jesus as claiming that he was a king because purple is a, a color of royalty. And they put a crown on him also to kind of tease him about being a king because they said he was claiming to be king. But we know the truth that he really is our king, isn't he? So these are two of our symbols, the color purple for a purple robe and a crown, but a crown of thorn that was placed on Jesus and that would be very painful. So as we're journeying, he's now been beaten and mocked, made fun of. And now let's take a look at this symbol. And let's read some more from the Bible. So 
So the soldiers took Jesus and went out, Jesus bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. So our main symbol that we all know about through that journey to the cross is, of course, the cross. But what do we have up here? Let's look for these words in the next part of our Bible passage. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews. And those letters up there on top, I-N-R-I, -I, those were used because like we said, it was written in different languages. I wonder if you could find a cross in your house somewhere that had those letters on it. Now you know what those letters mean. So Jesus was crucified on the cross. Now let's take a look at this next symbol. Seems like kind of a strange one, maybe. Do you notice what's on the end of this branch? Yep, that's a sponge. Let's see what it says in the Bible. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to, its, to his mouth. When it, Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head, and he gave up his spirit. So this sponge on the branch represents that final drink that Jesus had before he took his final breath and died on the cross. We talk about a lot of that as we have our Good Friday services and we walk through those final steps of Jesus to the cross and his death. But here we are now and it's Easter morning. So let's take a look at what our last symbol is. What do you see? Kind of interesting, huh? Let's hear what the Bible has to say in John chapter 20. Early in the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. So we've got this big rock, like a big stone, a stone that was removed from the tomb by the power of Jesus who had risen from the dead. So that gets to symbolize the empty tomb. It is Easter morning and we are celebrating because he is risen, risen indeed, alleluia. So let's share our Easter prayer this morning. Hold your hands and pray with me. Lord Jesus, you have conquered sin and death and given to us eternal life. Fill our days with the wonderful joy of your resurrection. Stay with us and with your whole church. May your word always be our strength and blessing. Amen. I wish you Easter blessings.
And I look forward to the time where we can be together again at Sunday school. And I thank you for taking time to review these symbols that represent Jesus' journey to the cross. And finally, the empty tomb. Have a blessed Easter.